Well, hello there, and welcome to episode five of our second series, uh, the podcast Jump Into Success. Okay, let's get going. Okay, 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 here we are, and uh, we're episode five of, wow, we're in series two, we're episode five already, we're zooming along, Um, it's amazing how fast it all goes. So I hope you've been enjoying these uh, podcasts, Um, we've certainly been enjoying in putting them together, and certainly the interviews that we've been doing, and uh, we've got a few more really, really interesting people lined up for, for interviews in some upcoming episodes. So be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, because I know that if you're interested in personal development and actually interested in success and bettering yourself and that notion of just taking that next step in your evolution and development, maybe uh, it would be a good idea to to subscribe, if I get my words out, uh, because I've got some really, really great people uh, uh, lined up uh, in the coming episodes. Now, what have we got for you today? Well, actually, this is interesting because we, we've we been doing, and some of you may have noticed, uh, some outside recordings and broadcasts, and we've been posting them on our social media channels. That's a YouTube, Facebook, uh, my LinkedIn profile, uh, and so on. And uh, what, what, what we've been doing is getting people to email in or message us through you know, social media or the website or whatever, asking general questions or very specific questions, in fact. Uh, anything from leadership, personal development generally, uh, NLP, coaching, any of those type of things. Uh, and we've been responding by recording the answers while I'm out and about on my my sort of get fit exercise walks down on the coastal path or up on the Quantox or wherever. So if you have got a question around personal development, leadership generally, or coaching, or of course NLP, you know I'm a great advocate of that. Uh, Be sure to get in touch, Uh, email in or get in touch through the website or social media and ask the question. And uh, you never know, we might answer your question uh, on one of the uh, recordings that we've been doing. And thanks for all the feedback we've had. Uh, We've really enjoyed uh, getting that as well. Now, so that leads us on to what we're talking about today, which is kind of spun out of one of the questions I was asked before. Um, which is around, you know, what NLP is and what is success and how do you create that using NLP. And I think part of my answer was around this notion that we've kind of developed here at the college about developing a personal philosophy for success or of success. And uh, we thought, well, actually, you know, we gave sort of a five minute video answer, but maybe a little bit more detailed might be sort of useful. And so what we've got for you today is just going to explore some of the ideas around that. So we don't have an interview today, so it's just me. Um, so but what I will say is you'll probably need a pen and paper to, to complete this uh, exercise that's contained in this podcast. So if you haven't got a pen and paper, you might want to pause the recording uh, or listen through and then come back to it later with a pen and paper, just so you can kind of do the exercise and get the maximum benefit uh, from this particular piece of content. So thinking about this idea of a philosophy for success, I guess the starting question is, you know, what do we mean by philosophy? Now, you think philosophy, certainly when I first started studying NLP and somebody said about philosophy per se, I don't know, you think sort of Greeks or dusty old books or something like like that, or maybe metaphysical or religious or something, you might think that's something around uh, philosophy. And in a way, that that is kind of maybe close to what we're talking about, but in a slightly different, more contemporary way. So we think about philosophy, and I did this earlier. I sort of did a quick Google search of definition of philosophy generally. And there are lots of different ones, but the one that sort of stood out to me that probably covers all of the bases that you might want to think about when thinking about philosophy. And it was, it was this. Philosophy equals the study of the basic ideas about knowledge, about truth, about right and wrong, religion and or metaphysics, and the nature and the meaning of life. So, a little bit deep then. <laughs> it's, not, it's not for the faint-hearted in a way. But however, we all have a philosophy. It's just that we don't think about 
what it is. We all have beliefs, which is kind of where we're going with this. What beliefs or philosophical approach do I have to life generally? What do I believe about myself, about the future, about the nature of living the way I do, etc., etc., etc. So when we say this notion of developing a personal philosophy of success, what do we mean by that? Now, again, you can Google it, but I mean, I've got a few sort of answers of my own. And it's one of the things that I talk a lot about uh, here at the college, especially in our Be Inspired group. Now, I've mentioned the Be Inspired group before. If you're not a member, you really ought to think about perhaps joining because it's completely free. And if you're a member of the Be Inspired group, what do you get? You get every single day an inspiring and motivational quotation in your inbox. And then every Monday, uh, you get a motivational self-coaching video that we post. And then once a month, we have uh, a live online event uh, where we usually have a guest. We've got some great content and we do our famous giveaway at the end where we give away a book or a course or a prize of some description around personal development. So, you know, if you want to, yeah, I fancy some more personal development. It's free. Why not? Just go onto the website, click on Be Inspired Group, sign up uh, and you'll get all of those goodies for free. And the one thing I will say, it's not an advertising platform. We don't then bombard you with loads of adverts. It's exactly what it says. Uh, it is all of that content that, that I've mentioned. There's no loads of ads. We don't sell on your details to anybody else. That's not what we do here at UKCPD. So the, the meaning of philosophy uh, of success or a personal philosophy uh, for success. Uh, what do we mean by that? Well, what, really what we mean is what do I believe about me tomorrow? Uh, do I believe that there can be a better tomorrow? Do I believe that I've got the wife or where, the strength, the uh, inner courage, the knowledge, the wisdom, uh, and the way to create a better life for myself or for my family or for my business or for my coaching practice or, or my team uh, or even my country, if, you, if you're thinking that big? So how do we develop this notion of a philosophy or a belief system that enables uh, and supports this idea of creating more success uh, in our lives. So this is the bit where you'll need the pen uh, and the paper. And uh, you, you, not just the pen and paper, you need a little bit of time as well. Uh, and so, you know, sit somewhere quiet and sort of in a, not meditative state, but kind of a reflective state, you know, quiet and calm. And then think about the following questions. So the first one, what does success mean to me? That's the first question. With your pen and paper, start thinking about an answer. What does success mean to me? Now, it can mean many, many different things to many, many different people because, you know, it's a very individualistic idea about what success might mean. And one of the tricks to make this work for yourself is to try and get your answer down to three or four words. You know, three is better, four is okay, five maximum. But sort of the one sentence version with three or four words, maybe five you need it, of what success means to you. And just take your time, don't, you know, think, oh, what does it really mean to me, success? What does that mean to me? And then when you've got sort of, you know, you've written something down, then you might ask yourself again this question, what does success mean to me if I had whatever you've just written down, the three or four words you've written down. What would that mean to me? And importantly, the follow-up question, what would that do for me? So in the first part of this exercise, you're writing down in three or four words, or maybe five, what you think success means to you. And then ask again, what does it mean to me if I had whatever you'd written down, what would that do for me? Now, I want you to be very clear about this. If I had this level of success or this measurement, whatever it is that you decide is success, what it means to you, what would that do for you? It's kind of what we mean, you know, the goal beyond the goal. Uh, what would that mean? What would that do? What would be different? What would I be doing? What would I be feeling? Who would I be with? And so on. So what would it do for you if you had that bit of success that you've mentioned? And then once you've reflected on that and you've had a little moment to think about it, uh, the next sort of question really is, what do I really believe success means personally? And what beliefs do I have around my abilities to succeed in creating more success in a given task or a 
future type of success, whatever that might be for you. Now, it could be success means to me I'm happy with my family in my home and I, I'm able to pay the rent. Great. Success might mean I'm going to launch my new business and I'm going to have X number of clients. Success might mean I want to retire in X number of years and live on the beach uh, in a sunny climate somewhere, maybe southern France or Italy or something. Uh, success might mean to me I want to uh, complete a course uh, and develop myself professionally. Success might mean I want to get that promotion and move forward in my commercial or uh, corporate type career. Only you know what it is. So everything I'm going to be saying from here on in is adaptable to any of those contexts. So what beliefs do you have currently around this notion of success? What beliefs do you have? Do you really believe that it's possible to change your life, to create more success uh, in the future? Now, I'm going to come back to that in a different way in a moment. But before you even get into that, you have to have some kind of destination in mind. So we're going to look at beliefs in a second. But first off, where do you want to be? If we're talking about success, it's going to be something in the future. You may have a measure of success now. Great. But we're talking about more success in the future and developing a philosophy that will enable it to happen. So first off, you need this, what we might say, a, a guiding vision or a powerful outcome or goal that you want to work towards. Sort of what we might say, a North Star that guides your actions, guides your uh, uh, focus and, you know, kind of maybe even ad adjusts your belief systems uh, as you go along. So what, what is that? So the next step then is, is to write down, and again, you've got to write it down, a clear goal or you might say a vision of where you want to be in five years time. Now we always say when we're setting outcomes with clients and with organizations or with students who are studying or, or you know, coaching an NLP practitioner certifications, you know, have a, have a six months goal, have a year goal and have a five year goal. That that's the kind of plan that you wanna to have to create success. Well, we're just gonna go with the five for now because long term. So where do you wanna be in five years time? Where do you want to be working? How much money do you want to be earning? What kind of relationships do you want to have? Where do you want to be living? What do you want to be eating? What kind of health do you want to be enjoying? Etc. 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 Now, the more detail you put in, the more compelling, of course, it's going to be. So, this future you, future you picture that you want to develop in your mind is got to be super compelling. The picture needs to be bright, large. Maybe add in music, whatever it takes, make that picture compelling. That's the goal. That's where I want to be in five years' time. And as I said, that acts as a kind of a North Star or a guide or sort of a ping that will draw you towards it uh, uh, when you set off uh, on this course. Now, once you've got that, it all comes back to, okay, how am I going to get there? And this comes into the first part of you know having this philosophy for success. I believe that it's possible because I believe in myself and my abilities. And so we have to develop that if we don't have it. But again, we'll get to that in a second. We go back to this goal, this, this sort of future five-year goal, you know, well-formed outcome that, that, that I've been talking about. Now, people will say to me often, Tony, you always talk about this, this well-formed outcome or well-formed futures. What do you mean by that? And it's very important to know that it's, it's more powerful than just setting yourself a goal. People set goals all the time and then they never get to them because they're not well formed. There's no strategy. There's no plan. It's kind of like a goal that really is a wish. So well formed outcomes is an NLP approach to setting uh, goals. It's a formula that's built around a few different principles. And the first one is that it's a positive. It's a positive statement of intent. I want whatever it might be. It's not, I don't want, it's always, I want, whatever the thing is that you want. And then it's about control. Is this your goal and you're in control of it? Or is there a whole committee involved? Is somebody else kind of saying, oh, you want to do this, don't you? It's, it's your goal, it's within your control, and you really want to get in the driving seat uh, and get on with it. It's specific and it's measurable. I'm going to talk a lot about the measurement in a second. And then it's ecologically sound meaning it benefits the individual, you, and maybe other people around you, but it certainly doesn't do uh, any harm. Now, 
Most people will be familiar with the notion of setting SMART goals. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't necessarily fulfill the criteria for well-formed outcomes. So I'm going to tweak SMART and turn it into SMARTs. Now, there's an article on this, a fairly detailed article uh, on on our website in the Think Big journal. Just go on to the website, click on Think Big. And if you want to find that particular article, just in the search bar, put in SMARTs and then you'll be able to find it and read it at your leisure. So I'm just going to pull a bit of that out uh, right now because that's what we're going to be referencing. So to, to turn SMART into SMART, so well-formed outcomes, be specific about your, your goal, your outcome. Remember, clarity equals motivation. Super, super clear, one sentence version. What will this do for you? Be very clear about the goal beyond the goal. When I've got that, I'll get this and it will lead on to this and this and this. So there's a plan. And just how motivated are you on a scale of one to 10? You need to be as close to 10 as is humanly possible. Then we get into measurement. How will you know you're making progress? Now, this is super important. This is one of the key differences between maybe other goal setting uh, formulae uh, and the well-formed uh, outcomes notion, which is the you know, sensory specific evidence. What will I see? What will I hear? And what will I feel that says, yes, I'm making progress. I've made a great start. I'm halfway there. I'm almost there. I am there. What will I see, hear and feel that says, yes, I'm making progress or I've succeeded. Then we have to do that reality check. Uh, you know, is this really achievable right here, right now? Uh, am I in control of this or am I wishing for something that's just too big or now is not the right time? So sort of a, uh, an illustration of what we mean, you know, we might all want to win the lottery, but is it achievable? Well, I'm not in control of it, so I don't know. I'm not in control. I could buy 100 tickets and still not win. Uh, so that's kind of out of my control. I'm not uh, able to control that process. Then we get into resourced. Uh, what resources do we need to make this a reality? Now, resources, what we mean by, by, by that is time, maybe money, maybe knowledge or wisdom or insight or skills, uh, maybe equipment, computers or maps or a car or a team of people, who knows? Do we have all of those resources? And if not, how do we get them? And in a way, that becomes the first part of the strategy. Get all of the resources in place uh, before you set off on, on your journey. And then time framed, time framed. When specifically... When specifically do you want this to happen? Now, we're setting a five-year outcome here, five-year sort of vision for the future. So that's a good sort of measurement to start with. So a stake in, you know, what's the date? Put the date five years' time. But when are you going to start? What's, when are you going to start? What, what's the date? Is it today? And if it isn't today, what must you do today to make sure that you make the appropriate start tomorrow or whatever else or, or the scheduled date you want to put in mind. But the further you put it off into the future, the more unlikely you are to actually take action on it. So what must you do today to make this a reality? And then I might even ask the question, what else? And then what else? And what else? maybe three or four what else's? Just to be clear, yeah, I've got everything uh, in place. It is a pretty powerful question. And then the final sort of step in SMARTS is steps. What's the first step? What must you do? first off to make this goal become a reality and so you get on the right track. So once you've got that you know, clear in your mind, I've got this outcome, I've got a strategy in place, I'm very, very clear about what it, where I'm going and what it will do for me or for my family or for my business or my team or whatever that, that, the, con the context is, only you know that. We need to get into the belief part, the philosophy, the f underpinning philosophical approach I have to my future. What do I really believe is possible for me? Do I believe that it's possible to have a better tomorrow? And if my answer is, well, I'm not sure or no, then maybe there's some work that needs to be done there. These limiting beliefs are like thought viruses that choke us, you know, briars choking off the garden flowers. We want to get rid of those. Now, there's lots of ways of getting rid of unhelpful beliefs, but actually the easiest way is to smother them with more useful beliefs. And I'm a great believer in using the presuppositions of NLP as a powerful starting point in developing a personal philosophy for success. Now, once again, you're going to need your pen and paper. So the first presupposition, and what we mean by presuppositions is we presuppose this to be true. 
uh, we're not selling a gospel here we're not selling a religion we're not selling a cult idea we're selling some ideas if you will that if you step into we will kind of more or less say your life will make a bit of an improvement and you'll notice a difference certainly that was my experience i think i've shared with most people before that have either listened to uh, one of these podcasts or uh, or other videos i've been on one of our trainings it was the presuppositions of nlp that changed my life that made me realize that i could do basically whatever i wanted to do to create a better future for myself uh, and my family so back to the presuppositions the first one i want you to think about is <clears throat> excuse me is the map is not the territory the map is not the territory now what do we mean by that well quite simply put we have absolutely no idea about how the world really works other than what we've learnt or what we're told and what we see what we hear what we feel what we taste and what we smell our five senses and those five senses we create a map of reality in our head and sometimes that map is flawed and people say i can't do that I'm not able to do that. And so the challenging coaching question might be, who says you can't? What's stopping you? What has to happen first so that you could do that? Etc. 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 So if there are limiting beliefs or doubts about you doing something, maybe that just needs a little bit of work and install some more useful beliefs, which we're now going to start doing. The second presupposition that I want you to consider is if one person can do something, then anyone can do it. Now, I'm not suggesting for a moment that you're going to be able to run as fast as Hussein Bolt or anything like that. Of course I'm not. What this really means is that all human experience has a structure. Oh, NLP is all about modeling. All human experience has a structure. But once we understand how somebody is doing something, we can learn the formulae, the model, if you will, uh, the structure and we can adapt it to fit what we want to create some kind of success so if one person can do it you probably could have a good go and get as near as damn it to it for yourself now the next presupposition is the single most powerful thing that changed my life there is no failure only feedback there's no such thing as failure there's only feedback now when things go wrong which inevitably they will because that's called life if we think failure, what happens? It's an emotive word. We start beating ourselves up and we give up. We give up. Ah, I see. Success isn't for me. I knew it. I shouldn't have tried. And that leads to this fear of failure, which stops us taking steps forward. But if we always look at failure as just feedback, it's just feedback. What's the learning? And when we get the learning, we think, OK, I've got that. I'm going to have another go with a different strategy based on the learning. What we say in coaching is after action review sometimes. So we set out to do this particular thing. The action takes place and we review what happened. And then we adjust our strategy accordingly so that we keep moving forward. Now, the next presupposition is if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always had. If you want something different in your life, i.e. more success and happiness, you're going to have to do something different. Now, in NLP, we think thinking is a behavior. It's not just an abstract thing. It's a behavior. So you need to change your thinking. Maybe that's the key. Change your thinking, which is linked to the three previous presuppositions that, that I've mentioned. And then the fifth one, we're only going to cover six uh, in, in this particular podcast. The, the fifth one is the person with the most flexibility of behavior will control the system. It's often referred to as the law of requisite variety. Essentially, what it means is the more choices you give yourself and more strategies you give yourself, the more likely you are to be success. Rather than this is the way we do things around here, you know, the old monkeys in a cage thing, that's not going to fly, especially in the modern world. So the more flexibility and more options you give yourself, the more likely you are to be successful. And then finally, the last presupposition that goes into this kind of melting pot, I suppose, of philosophical ideas to create your own personal philosophy for success is if you want to understand, act. The learning is in the doing, not in the abstract just thinking about it. You've got to do it got to do it get your hands dirty get stuck in there start taking action get out of bed get off the couch get out make the calls send the emails do whatever it takes to get the ball rolling to create success now let me just run through these one more time the map is not the territory we don't know what we don't know 
So don't worry about that. Do what you want to do based on your clear smarts outcome. If one person can do something, anyone can do it. And the chances are whatever it is you're trying to do, somebody else already has done that and might even have you know, a clue what that first or second step is or have some resources to share with you. It's important that you take on as a absolutely foundational belief for yourself. There's no failure, there is only feedback because it changed my life and I know it can change yours. And given you want to change, if you've always done what you've, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always had, which means there'll be no change if you don't change what you're doing and what you're thinking. Remember flexibility, that's super important. And then if you want to understand, act. Putting all of those things together, you step in and you really believe them, you really believe them, your life will definitely take a change for the better. And you can begin to have this outlook of, you know, yes, the future is different. The future has got more possibilities. And then that after a while, and I'm not saying a long while, actually quite a short while, uh, this begins to develop this notion of a growth mindset, or as I prefer to call it, a success mindset. Now linked to this is this commitment, and you've got to have it. And if you're listening to this podcast, you may be one of these people already, which is great. This commitment to continuous personal learning or ongoing lifelong learning or CPD, whatever words you want to, you know, have a get personal development plan. Because let me tell you, it is not a luxury. It is a necessity in the modern world. Staying informed about maybe industry trends or emerging technologies uh, or other things that are going on in your field uh, or generalized so-called soft skills you know, enhancing your soft skills, that the knowledge and abilities that they give you will, will enable you to adapt as things change around you, develop new strategies and remain relevant in an ever-changing world. They are the kind of things you really want to focus on. Okay, so if you really want to develop this personal philosophy for success, what I've just gone over is the basic building blocks. Now, if you want to do a lot more than that, uh, you can you know, pick up a book, enroll on a course, uh, there's plenty of stuff on our website, but it's this notion of engaging in the process and enriching your knowledge, your skills, uh, your abilities, your confidence, uh, mastering and controlling your internal dialogue. All of those things will lead to you developing this personal philosophy for success. And then the last thing I will say on this before we begin to wrap up is the most powerful and uh, life-changing experience that I had was when I did my NLP practitioner and coach training. And I highly recommend it. Obviously, we, we do that here at UKCPD, uh, but it gives you all of the tools, all of the models to really take control of your life and go in a different direction. And as well as that, you'll have a great time. Okay, so that's what we've got for you uh, on, on this episode. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe. And why not even tell your friends or your colleagues that you've been listening to this and you've enjoyed it because they may enjoy it as well. Uh, the more subscribers we get, the more likely we are to continue doing this and to get better and more interesting and bigger, may I say, if I can use that phrase, uh, bigger and more, uh, I guess, well-known personalities on uh, as guests. Okay, that's it for now. Take care of yourselves, guys, and I will see you again on the next episode. Keep on smiling.